you very much for coming along today. Thank you for having me. And bringing Bloodhound with you. So you'll be CEO of Bloodhound Project. That's correct. What is the Bloodhound Project? Tell me about it. The Bloodhound Project is a project that is attempting to set a new world landscape record. But underpinning all of that, it originally and still is and has an aim of inspiring the next generation in science, engineering, maths. Um, but yes, ultimately to set a new landscape record. And how far along with you, with it are you at the moment? Because this, this project has been running for quite a long time, isn't it? Yes, it has. Um, it started in 2008. Uh, Richard Noble started the project. Um, we successfully did our low speed testing in uh, 2017 in Yuki and and then we did our high speed testing in 2019 in South Africa on the Hackstein Pan um, and we returned back to the UK looking to seek new funding to prepare the car then to go back out to set the new land school record. Um, Covid came along um, and some well pretty much all of our sponsorship and funding streams dried up um, with the pandemic. So currently I have been since then um, discreetly looking for new funding um, but it's come to the point that actually I need to add an additional twist to the project that I hope will bring in the final funding I need um, to go back out to South Africa and set a new Land Street record. And that new funding is 12 million you're looking for to, the to get out to South Africa yeah, and set the record? Yeah, the total yeah. funding I need is 12 million. Um, and that will cover all the costs for preparing the car, integrating the rockets. So when we did the high speed testing, we just used the jet engine. Um, and that was the high speed testing was all about validating the data, the aerodynamic data to confirm the modeling we've done on the car um, was now actually matched what reality had, you know, operating the car. So in the desert. So it's the funding covers that the integration, of the rocket um, and then the redeployment back out to South Africa. Um, which we've done before, obviously, um, to set new Lesbian record. And you handed me one of these today. Yes. You're looking for a new driver. That's right, that's the twist. And so, uh, what um, attributes does a new driver need apart from the spare 12 million? Yes, no, it's a very good question. And I think um, a lot of people are surprised. It's probably wider than you think. I mean, the, the obvious answer is I need someone who's experienced operating in a high speed environment. Um, but actually, it's demonstration that they they have gone through and they know and they're experienced in preparing for and training for that high pressured environment. And then obviously demonstrated that they can operate in that environment and they don't crumble when under pressure. So discipline is absolutely key. It's all about maintaining focus even though you're under that extreme pressure. Um, so that's who I'm looking for. They could be a driver, a car, a motorcyclist, or even a pilot, aerobatic display well, pilot. Kind of driver, pilot wasn't that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Andy, uh, is, his experience is mm -hmm. based on a fast jet pilot in the Air Force, uh, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, history has shown that the land speed record holders have had varied backgrounds. Um, so I, it's a fairly wide field, I, I, I feel, and. Um, I hope that then attracts someone with that experience and then obviously the funding um, as well to then reform the team and you will remain on the team and go back out and set a new Lesby record. Any names you'd love to see in the driver's seat? You know, Lewis Hamilton maybe, Lando Norris? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, a, there's actually a long list of names out there, of course, and if they're yeah. interested then I'd love them to reach out, get in touch. And, um, and maybe we can chat about a potential, yeah, new, you new heard job. That, guys? Yes. Not Richard Hammond. <laughs> not Richard Hammond. <laughs> not after that room incident. No, 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 no. He's not. He's not known for driving fast cars, is he? So talking of power, uh, what you, you mentioned the jet engine. What power is in there? Yeah, so, so the, the, the EJ200 jet engine, which in that, in the picture you showed mm -hmm. me, is obviously, that's the reheat, the afterburner, as the Americans say, yeah. the flames out the back. Um, that's the EJ200. That is from the Eurofighter Typhoon fighter jet. Um, and that can provide up to about nine tons of thrust just on its wow. own. It's just phenomenal. It only weighs about a ton, but it can produce nine tons of thrust. Phenomenal. Nine tons of, nine yeah. tons of thrust to, to, most, to most people, people like me, nine tons of thrust. But I, I, I can't actually imagine what nine tons of yes. thrust is like. So give me a comparison. My car is 400 brake horsepower, top speed of 183 yeah. miles an hour. 
Yeah. How does this compare? Well, it's very difficult to compare the direct correlation between the power of a car that drives the wheels and the e-flux from a jet engine. But I, with that jet engine, you're taking a six and a half ton car yeah. from zero, and as we did in South Africa, up to 628 miles per hour in about a minute. In a that, minute? Yeah, that, to, to, that is the thrust that that so produces. So 0 to 60 time is? Well, it's probably <laughs> a, a bit slower than some of the fast cars you know, but, okay. but the difference yeah. being is, the acceleration continues and keeps yeah. continuing and pushing on. So most so I cars maybe beat you in a 0 to 60 race. Though. Probably not in your car. I ran faster than this yes. car today. Yes, yes. Well, you're more than <laughs> welcome to try. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, the power is phenomenal. And then we yeah. have the addition of the rocket that will provide the yeah. additional thrust we need to take it up to beyond 800 miles per hour. So you've done 628 yeah. miles an hour. You're aiming for 800 plus. Okay. And you fly in a car out to South Africa for testing. Mm -hmm. Your carbon footprint must be massive. Yeah, I, uh, so the importance of Bloodhound is it has to be relevant. Um, and I took the decision last year that we are aiming to set the first net zero land speed record without using fossil fuel. And how are you planning to achieve that? Yeah, so it's about the operation of the car at the moment. So mm -hmm. the jet engine currently runs on fossil fuel, and the intention is to use a sustainable aviation fuel um, instead of fossil fuel. The rocket is already green because it, its emissions is oxygen and water, high temperature steam. So if the aim, as I intend to do, is to run the EJ200 on a sustainable aviation fuel, then the plan that will then mean we're not using any fossil fuel, and therefore we are we are relevant to today, operating sustainably, pushing engineering boundaries. And it for me, it's demonstrating you can still have fun, you can still set new land speed records, and you can do it sustainably. Because yeah. there are some people who go, well, you know, if we have to restrict our use of fossil fuel, we can't do the things mm -hmm. we used to do. And in my view, that's not true. And engineers and scientists are going to solve this problem. And I'm going to demonstrate it by running Bloodhound yeah. and setting a new last week record. Yeah. Oh, there's already some amazing synthetic fuels out there that need to be of Bentley on, so mm, yeah, brilliant. Exactly. Brilliant. And uh, the, the track in South Africa that you're using, whereabouts is the track? Yeah, so the track is um, in Northern Cape uh, mm -hmm. in South Africa on the Namibian border. It's called the Hatskeen Pan. Um, and there are very few places on the planet we can run the mm -hmm. car because we need a long, flat desert. Um, and we've identified the Hatskin Pan floods regularly, and that's important to keep and sustain the desert nice and flat. And, and the, the great thing about it is um, it's in actually a relatively poor part of the country. And so by Bloodhound appearing in that location, um, we've increased employment. We've al allowed, the government have now provided water supply to that region, mobile communications. So we're also adding to the local community, and I'd love to go back and continue supporting the local community. What kind of preparation do you need to do for the track? Because, I mean, I've, having travelled at... I mean, the, the fastest I've driven a car is 155 miles an hour. On the German autobots, of course. Yes. No speed limit there. And some of the surfaces, when, when the surface gets a bit rough on the road, mm -hmm. you, you really don't feel comfortable driving yeah. at that speed. Every little bump. Yeah is a worry. Yes. Now the speeds you're talking about, and those tyres look like, you know, well the wheels, don't seem like they would soak up many bumps. No, you, you've raised a very good point. Track preparation is yeah. absolutely key. It's a key safety aspect, and that was, again, um, the testing we did in 2019 was not just the car, and not just the team, it was the track as well. And the track has taken a number of years to prepare, uh, clearing it of stones, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is all about the fact that it's naturally prepared mm -hmm. by the regular flooding. So by the, the geography of the land, keeping it flat, that's one thing, and then by the meticulous cleaning of stones, um, that has now allowed us to have a perfect track for operating this car at high speed. Um, the wheels are metallic, um, and we were very impressed with how minimal the damage 
minor, minor damage uh, in the wheels of the car, running up to 600 plus miles. So I presume you would have problems running regular rubber tyres on a, a car at that speed. Absolutely, it's a, it's a non-starter. Yeah. Absolutely, a non-starter. We ran the car in Yuki on a rubber, um, but once you get up to speeds beyond 300 miles per hour you are going to struggle with the integrity of a tyre. Yeah. And so yeah. metallic wheels are the only way forward. And how did you choose that location for the track? Because obviously, you know, we've had down speed records um, in, the, in the, on the Salt Flats at Utah mm -hmm. and Pendine Sands, which I presume is not long enough these days for the speeds we're talking about, yeah. where Malcolm County set this yeah. record. That's another good question. So actually technology again came into this. Um, what was done is by using uh, Google Maps data, there was some analysis done on the whole planet. So once you remove the water, you remove built up areas, you remove forests, you actually come down to a few locations that are long enough and suitable enough and they obviously need to be flat. So by using you know, height data, you can uh, very quickly with an algorithm work out that that's flat. Then once the computers decided the locations that are suitable, mm -hmm. you then go, actually, there are some countries, some places on the planet that are not stable enough for us for various reasons. Um, so therefore, you have to remove those off the list. And you come down to probably a 12 or so, a dozen locations, then actually you go and start visiting them to assess if mm -hmm. they're suitable. And, and there's the tracks in America are not as suitable as they used to be. They're not the flooding. Bonneville, Bonneville not they're not flooding. They're not yeah. long enough. They're not as flat yeah. as they used to be. Uh, the Hatskin pan still has regular flooding, which absolutely keeps it nice and flat. Has there been speed events held there before, or is this something that, that Bloodhound has brought to the area? Yeah, I, there has a little bit, actually. It's already known locally within South Africa as a good place to, to race cars at speed. So they have had local events um, on it. Um, so we're not the first, but obviously we, will be, we are the first to go up beyond 600 miles per hour. So has anyone set a land speed record there before? No, so no, be the first, yes. You will yeah. be the first one. Yeah. We're thinking positive, you will yeah, we be will. the first one we to will. set a land Absolutely. speed record and, and now what's interesting is, and this is this is a great thing, I, I was born in Africa, I was born in Nairobi, and now what, what's great is the record, the record will recognise the country of the team, but also the country you do it in. And yes. for Africa, particularly, I think it would be great to set a new world land speed record in a different continent. And I look forward to I doing that. Fantastic! And you're on tour with her at the moment. That's right. Uh, looking for a driver. That's right. Uh, where Where else are you going? So yeah, we've been around the country from the Midlands down into London. Obviously, we're now here, and we appreciate and thank Brooklands for having us. The next stop is down Bewley, um, and then that that's the end of our tour. So by then, we would have done six days of touring around the country, just publicising this, and hopefully, there'll be a driver out there, a potential driver out there, who will get in touch and then we can get on with this project and get back out to South Africa. I'd be happy to give it a go. You will, you, yeah, you just yeah. need to put your name forward. <laughs> how, and how do we do that? Yeah, just go onto the website and uh, the look, website. At our, look at our email address and, and reach out. Bloodhound LSR, LSR, LSR. Com. There it is. And, and yes, QR, QR code, code and there's there. a QR code yeah. on the car. Yeah. So if you QR see the car, the car, put your camera at the car, the model car, and off you go. But thank you very much for bringing her along today and uh, parking her right in front of the Malcolm County. Yes. It's a fantastic link between the old and the new. Absolutely. And, and that's holders. why I'm especially, and the team are especially grateful for this opportunity. I mean, look at that. That's a great sight. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? We're thrilled to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.